So basically, we see in this area here, we take a 3D model. From that model, when we publish it into the software, we generate takeoff items and we generate quantities automatically from each of the uh, takeoff items which are identified. To each of them, um, we create a cost plan. And this isn't something magic. It doesn't mean that BIM creates the cost plan. The estimator creates the cost plan. We can use data from many different sources. You can manually input. You can go to a standard library of things that you may have to call upon, bring them in. You know, I've priced pile caps before. I'll bring a pile cap assembly from a previous project. Um, and you, you put your data together, and then you just use the quantities which are coming from the takeoff. So many people think that BIM will you know, eventually get rid of estimators. It just doesn't work like that. Um, this is a question um, or a statement that we got this morning <coughs> from a LinkedIn group from the American Society of Professional Estimators. And you know, that sort of says it all. I wonder why people think estimating is only quantity takeoff when it is so much more. It's damn right. You know, I, I used to do it. Um, I was very skeptical when I came to VICO, uh, but wanted to learn more. And then the more and more I've learned and the more and more I've used it, I know how useful the tool is to make your job quicker and slicker, but not to take my job away. OK, so these things that we're asking here, the crew mix, the work days, the environmental conditions, of course, these all need building into an estimate. But that isn't a reason to not use BIM as the way that you get the quantities to drive that estimate. It's just something which makes it quicker. So change um, in, the, in the years that I was estimating, I used to use a scale rule at first. And then we got digitizers. So gradually, everything's getting a little bit easier. Then that developed into on-screen takeoff on computers. And now we can use a 3D model to generate um, all the quantities required to produce the estimate. The one common denominator, the technology improves, one thing that change is each virtual estimator. Someone has got to bring all that useful data together and create a bid. And that will never change. So the way that we designed the software, apart from the Excel look and feel, was to support a developing cost plan. Because obviously, you've got to create a cost plan from um, you know, back of a cigarette packet sort of information right through to detailed design. And just to get rid of an estimate at each point and start again is you know, pointless. So we wanted a system where we could take it right from its roots and develop it right the way through to its end. So if we have um, a very basic concept planning model, so we've maybe got area types, you know, the corridors, um, the program areas, the offices, the office space, um, you know, the different, different parts of the building, different area types, we can allocate different costs to them on a square foot basis. And we typically do that by system superstructure, exterior, enclosure, etc. And we can just input a rate per square foot, same as you would do in Excel, same as you would do with very limited information. As that moves along, you get a schematic design, which, OK, they're not designed um, dimensions, but the design intent is known. So we know what sort of walls we're going to have, maybe, or you know, roughly what sort of foundations. We're always going to have a slab. Uh, so you can start developing that estimate with what you do know. And this in tiered system, so now we've taken this foundations and substructure, which has a, a rate at the top, and then we start adding the parts underneath. Once we're happy that those parts underneath equal the scope which is included at this level, we would simply activate this assembly, and it would then uh, compare the price from our build-up to our original um, one-line price. And we've got that flexibility of being able to see that comparison all the way through. So you can always track against your initial assumption. And it's very easy to see and clear for everyone uh, and really good visibility. 
as you can see now if you go to uh, DD phase design development now the, uh, the the model has progressed in terms of we've maybe actually got design dimensions now and so does our estimate so we know what type of reinforcement maybe or sort of concrete but we just add another layer another tier to the estimate and then keep um, changing where the, what is driving the actual price and then again we go further down in detail and now we're breaking it down to the actual resources and we can go right down to what we call a virtual mock-up level typically a building model you would never model to this level of detail um, for the whole building but some areas which are very intricate, very difficult, you may take just a section of that building and decide to model it in detail. Um, so, you know, again, your estimate is developing as much as you want along with the design. That enables us to have a mixed level of detail models. Everything doesn't have to be at the same level of detail. Here we've got a full foundation model, but all the, subs all the superstructure is just being costed with square foot allowances at this point and every time you've got something which can replace the square foot allowances you just deactivate that massing model and your square foot allowances and replace them with actual costs from modeled elements so in the software in fact I'll show you this now um, what I'm showing here is the model um, here are all the different models currently we can support um, Revit, Archicad, CADduct, IFC and Tecla and bring them all into our system as a common platform so we can get uh, models from different sources and bring them all together and get quantity takeoff for them all. And so if we select this is a list of takeoff items which are generated from the model and then if we open any of these we can see the different quantities which are available for estimating. Something I should say about the quantities as well, we call them construction caliber quantities. Um, many CAD systems already produce quantities and um, some systems utilize those quantities. They aren't construction caliber, they aren't particularly what an estimator needs. Um, volume may be a good one, yeah we can use the volume, but if you wanted uh, say the formwork area of a column, so you want the vertical surface area and you take what the CAD system calls surface area, you'll also get the top and the bottom of the column as part of the quantity, which isn't too useful um, if you want to be accurate. So we've developed our own algorithms, which we run on any of the CAD uh, systems models, which we import um, for the type of quantities which are useful for estimators. Again, you can see in here the, the tiered system, um, substructure, shell, and then we've broken the shell down, superstructure, then floors, then roof, the exterior enclosure, we've broken down to the walls, windows and doors, and then the walls into the different wall types. And we activate these levels as we go. Uh, but I'll just show you that in a little more detail in one moment. Um, so we have a list of take -off items, takeoff quantities underneath, and we have um, a formula panel. So we can use any of the quantities that we get, and then we can adjust that for anything the estimator thinks fit. If he wants to add 10 cents, something 20 percent, or he, you know whatever, we can cater for that. You don't you don't have to just use what comes from the model. <coughs> 